Just a fair warning, there are a couple clips of me fighting some mid to late game bosses in this video. If you guys don't want to see any spoilers, just close your eyes for a quick second. The clips are only short. What is going on YouTube? It is Club Nismo, and this is my dexterity and intelligence build for mid to late game in Elden Ring. This is still my original prisoner class that I brought into the game for the first time, and it's had a couple evolutions over the course of the game. I first started off as making a spell blade, and as I traversed my way through mid game, I started finding some items and some things I wanted to try out. And this is kind of what my build has evolved into, and I've had great success with it throughout this section of the map and further up north. We'll get right into the stat sheet here. I am level 89. I've been main mainly focusing my points towards vigor, dexterity, and intelligence, and sprinkling in some points into mind and endurance just to up that stamina pool. Since we are power stance in katanas, it does take up quite a bit of stamina. And threw some extra points into mind for our spell casting and some of our other abilities that we use. We are running the Nagakiba katana with the hoarfrost stomp Ashes of War on it. This is a pretty neat Ashes of War because it adds magic damage to your attack power and... It gives you a frost buildup passive effect. So it's working, it's scaling off of intelligence and dexterity. And for the frost buildup passive effect, that mainly scales off of your weapon level. And I went with this katana because, like, it just looks badass. Look how giant that katana is. And I have, I chose to put the Nakakiba katana in my main hand so when I'm fighting I can just I can let the horror frost stomps go and in our offhand we are using a Moonvale katana and this weapon is super amazing for dexterity and intelligence builds because of how the magic damage scales on this weapon it just it works perfectly you have a B scaling in intelligence, and it also has a passive effect blood loss buildup. So the super interesting thing about this is when you're fighting an enemy, you can use your horror frost stomp, and that the second blast can stun them. So if you use that, it stuns them, and then you get a couple hits on. Um, you will have frost buildup and bleed buildup. That's going to make for a ginormous, ginormous burst potential. And for our alternate offhand, we are using the meteorite staff. We still use spells on this build, and there's a few other reasons that we have this here that I'll get into a little bit later. For the gear, we got Perceptor's Big Hat, and the reason I still have this piece is because it does give us extra FP, which is perfect. I could go for a little bit of a heavier helm. I do have the equipment load for it, but I just, I like, I like how the big hat looks. I just like this style. And we do have Blythe's armor, scaled gauntlets, and scaled greaves. So to get these two, these first two pieces, you have to, to get Perceptor's big hat, you have to make it about halfway through Rani's quest line, and you have to make it to the end of her quest line to get Blyde's armor. To be completely honest, I'm not too sure where I got the scaled stuff. This is kind of just my filler gear for right now, um, to give me a little bit extra poise. I'm still working on how I want my character to look because in this game, Fashion Souls is everything. The armor does a little bit, but not a huge, huge deal. And one of the awesome things about this is we do have 48 poise. I would go, I would like to go a little bit higher than that just because if, if we're to Horfrost stomp somebody and run in and 
get our trying to get our bleed off on them and they knock us off balance one of the biggest things we want to achieve is to get the frost buildup and bleed buildup because that is where the biggest damage potential on this build is for our talismans we got Erd Tree's favor and this is a great one because it's raising our maximum hp stam and equipment load everything that you could want with your build we got the green turtle talisman to raise our stamina recovery like i said before we're power stancing dual wheel katanas on an intelligence build so we are burning through our stamina fairly quickly so if you rule dodge away this green turtle will get your stamina right back up asap and we are running Radagon Sore Seal. This is another awesome one. It greatly ra raises attributes, but also increases damage taken. And the increased damage taken that this talisman gives you is negligible. Doesn't exist. I haven't, I haven't found a huge downside to this. There, there probably is. I, I can't tell you the percentage off the top of my head, but it's a great one. Like, if we're just un unequipped that, like, look at look at the amount of stats it's giving us. Especially in the strength department. Because we don't want to invest too much points into strength to wield our katanas. So this does it for us. It gives us a lot of health. A lot of endurance, strength, and dexterity. Just perfect. This is kind of your flex spot here. I like running this one for now because it, it raises my intelligence, so it's going to boost my overall damage, which is never a bad thing. We are running 7 health flasks and 4 FP flasks. So the reason I'm running them this way is because I've noticed with this build, you are trading attacks a little bit. So you are going to need a little bit more HP than FP. And over the past couple boss fights that I've encountered, I haven't had a resource issue in quite some time now. With the Perceptor's big hat and the points we've put into mind, our, our gas tank for FP is large enough that we don't have to worry about running out and chugging flasks the whole fight. And for this specialty flask, we got temporarily raises max stam and restores half of max HP. And of course, for our summon, we are using the Mimic tier. This is just all around a great, great summon to have out. And for our memorized spells, we are using the Karian Fanlax, Glenstone Ice Rag, Rock Sling, Collapsing Stars, and Rock Blaster. These last two spells I don't mess around with too much. I just have them on my bar just in case the AI allows my Mimic to use these. These do quite a bit of damage, so and he has unlimited FP, so I don't have to I don't have to worry about spending mine. For the first part of the battle, you can run your staff in your left hand just to get get that chip damage at range. And once they start engaging you, you can swap to your dual will katana. You can put you can put a horfrost stomp down, do a quick jump attack. Get some of that in, roll out another one, and just kind of repeat this. Go back to your staff if you need to, if you need some distance. Once again, the Dex Intel build, just like my other build I posted, is so versatile. You can you can spam Horror Frost Stomp. You can get bleed up on them. You can do just about everything on this build. The FP pool allows for it. The stamina pool allows for it. We got a great health pool. And this will probably be the template for my PvP build in Elden Ring as well. As of right now, I'm just trying to make my way through PvE. But this is probably what I will be running for PvP. Once again, I won't be showing the locations of each and every individual item. I do have a couple guides on my channel showing where I got some of my things and there's 
plenty of content creators out there showing each individual item to give you the best description that you can possibly have to find this item with ease. I hope you guys enjoyed my quick build video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.